we're gonna work on getting our heart rate up and our bodies moving. It's so important to do some sort of exercise every day, whether it's running, walking, or just playing. So to take our heart rate, usually what you do is you take your two fingers and you can put it here on your wrist, or you can put it up here on your neck, just underneath your jawline. And so for me right now, my heart rate is, I'd say between 70 to 100 beats per minute. But what I'm hoping is that after we do this exercise, my heart rate will pump up and be up in the high hundreds. It shows to me that I'm working really, really hard. So if you have a second, maybe just see what your heart rate is now, and then we'll test it at the end of the class. Super stuff. All right, so we're gonna start off with jogging. We need to send a message to our brain and say, hello, wakey, wakey, it's time for exercise. So if there's anybody at home, say, come on in, let's go and let's exercise and get our bodies pumping. All right, so we're gonna have a timer and we're gonna try and do two exercises per minute. All right, the first one we're gonna do is jogging and then jumping jacks. Remember, when we do our jumping jacks, our feet go out and hands out at the same time and back in. Okay, let's give it a go. Music maestro, if you please. Ready? Off we go. Okay, yes. I am so excited about exercise today and I'm so glad that you guys are joining me. And um, getting our bodies moving and our heart rate up is so good. I can already feel my happy endorphins flowing throughout my body. It's gonna be a great day, that I know. Good job. Now, listen, if you can go even faster than me, you do that. If you have loads and loads of energy, go do, 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 do. quick as you can. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna move on next to our jumping jacks. Remember, feet out, arms up above the head. Same time. Okay, here we go. And out and in. Again, if you have tons of energy, I wanna see you go really hard, fast as you can. If not, okay, we can also go like this, right? To just get our still, to keep our hearts pumping and our heart rate up. So either way, you have loads of energy, like this. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Or like this, also works just as good. Perfect, whew, I'm already feeling it. <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay, so next up is gonna be High knees and line jumps. Now with the high knees, what I want you to do is put your hands out and bring your knees up to your hands. So not hands to knees, but in fact, knees to hands. Okay, so we can do this really fast if we have loads of energy. So, or we can do slow and controlled. Either one works. You do the best you can do either way, okay? Then we're gonna use our imagination. We're gonna imagine that there's a line and we're gonna jump over the line. See, pop, pop. Or we can also step over it, which I'm probably gonna do. And I'm gonna probably dance too. Okay, are we ready? High knees, here we go. Yes, knees, Two hands, knees, two hands, and quick as you can at home. Try go faster than me. Good stuff. This is feeling good already, actually. I'm getting kind of a little bit of a stretch in as well as exercise. And I'm feeling really, really positive. Ah, yes, knee to hand, knee to hand, knee to hand, let's go. Okay, next up, imagination. Line jumps. All right, so if you've loads of energy, over and back, or step. And I'm gonna step, because I wanna groove. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Here I am. I'm going underneath a rope or something. See, imagine it was here. And under, under. See, I've just made up a new dance. <laughs> Keep it up. Remember, side to side if you can, if you have loads of energy. Really good, guys, really good. Keep it up. Heart rate's going. 
lovely stuff. Okay, now we're gonna hit the ground. So the first position we're going to do is called the plank. Now you can do this on your hands or if you like, you can do it on your elbows. I'm going to do it on my hands and we're gonna to try to see if we can hold it for 30 seconds. Here we go. Hen, do, tri, kahar, kuig, she, shacht, ocht, ni, de, heindig, doyeg, trizig, kaherdig, kuigdig, shedig, shachtig, ochtig, nidig, feha, fehen, fido, fetri, fekahar, fekuig, feheshe, feheshacht, feheocht, feheni, trocha. Well done. Now, the next position we're going to do is called the side plank. So, as you can imagine, I will be on my side doing the plank. Let's see if we can hold this for 30 seconds. Now, before I begin, I need to make sure that I'm picking up my side when I'm up. I don't want to be like this. I want to try to keep my body as straight as possible. Okay, well, Chevre, let's go. Hen, do, tri, kahar, kuig, she, shacht, ocht, ni, de, heinzeg, doyeg, tridig, kahardig, kuigdig, shezeg, shachtig, ochtig, nidig, feha, fehen, fedo, fetri, fe kahar, fe kuig, fe she, fe shacht, fe hocht, fe hani, trucha! Good job! Now, remember that your elbow should be below your shoulder, okay? So directly down. And here we go. Hen, do, tri, kahar, kuig, she, shacht, ocht, ni, de, heinzeg, doyeg, trizeg, Karadig, Kugdig, Shadig, Shachdig, Ochdig, Nidig, Feha, Fehen, Fehdo, Fehtri, Fehkahar, Fehkuig, Feheshe, Feheshacht, Fehehocht, Feheni, Trucha. So crunches are for our tummy so that we can try and make our core or our tummy strong. Now, this one I like to call taking the biscuits out of the jar. So we're gonna imagine that there's a jar here full of biscuits and a jar here full of biscuits. And we're gonna take them, yum, 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 take them, yum, 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 take them. Okay, but the hard part, <laughs> we need to keep our heels up off the ground, okay? So see if you can do that with me. If you're finding it difficult, maybe just keep one foot up and then you can try and work with the two, okay? All right, so here's my jar, here's my jar. Ready, feet up. Yum, yum. I am the cookie monster. Oh yeah, I'm reaching in and I'm eating. This is definitely making me hungry for some biscuits. Yum, yum, good job. Don't forget to breathe. Good job, I'm nearly there. You should feel kind of a burn or tightness in your tummy. Keep those feet up. And two more. Last one. Woo! Good job. All right. Next one we're going to do is we're going to make a 90 degree angle with our legs. So, or an L shape. See that 90 degree angle? Or L shape. And we're going to just crunch up. So, we're just going to try and get our shoulders up off the ground. All right, so it's not a total sit up, it's just a crunch. And I want you to really visualize squeezing your tummy muscles, okay? Because that will give you an even deeper workout to improve uh, building your muscles. Okay, so if you want, hands behind the head, but do not pull on the neck or behind the ears or across the chest, whichever is easiest for you. I'm gonna go behind the ears. All right, we ready? Let's go. Really nice. Just get the shoulders just up off the ground. You should be feeling it in your abdominal muscles. Really nice. Keep going. Give me five more. One, two, three, four, five. Now sprawl out 
and go to sleep. Take a color. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't go to sleep. So that's us finished with the floor. Now we're going to do two more little activities and these are called proprioceptive activities. And proprioceptive activities put a little bit of pressure on our joints, which helps to relax us and generally makes us feel regulated. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to pick a wall. This is the wall I'm going to pick. And I put my hands up against it and I'm going to try to push through the wall as hard as I can for 10 seconds. Hain, tho, tri, cahar, cuig, she, shacht, ucht, ni, de. Okay, I didn't manage to get through the wall, but I have a lovely feeling rushing through my body right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some chair lifts. So this is super aska. You might start off only being able to do a few seconds, but see what you can build yourself up to. I'm going to try to get us up to 10 seconds and I'll show you how. I'm going to put my hands underneath me as if I was sitting and I was cold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my whole body up only using my hands. And I'm going to try to hover there for 10 seconds. Wish me luck. Let's hope I can do it. Hain, do, tri, cahar, cuig, she, shacht, ocht, ni, de. Oh my goodness. I don't know what it's like in the school that you normally go to, but when I tell the kids that I'm going to do this class, the kids normally jump up and scream and say, yes, yeah, yes, woo, yeah, and stuff like that. So today we're going to do a PE class. Hey, I can hear you. Great. Now let's all go down to the hall. Wait a second. I can't bring the, all the lights and the camera and the sound equipment down to the holla. We can do a PE class all about games here in the classroom and you can play along in your sitting room. All right, let's get started. Now, PE stands for physical education. So physical, well, that's our bodies and moving around, isn't it? And education, that's what we do best here at the Homeschool Hub. Education is learning. Okay, so we are learning about how our bodies work and maybe a bit about sport as well. Now, okay, I've got some stuff here. Let's go through them. I'm going to play a game that is going to test out our reactions. This game is called Ruler Drop. Now, just off camera is Emer. Emer has this device here. It is helping us out with some social distancing today. Okay, so here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Emer to grab the top of the ruler. Now, with my hands apart and level with the bottom of the ruler. Now, in a second, Emer is going to drop the ruler and see if I can react in time to catch it. Here we go. <laughs> My reactions were pretty slow there. Let's try it again. Okay, reset. So, Emer pinches the top of the ruler. My hands are apart down at the bottom, and here we go. Hey, good reactions that time. I just about caught the top of the ruler. And because it is a ruler, I'm able to measure how fast my reactions are. So because I'm holding it up here at the top, my reactions were just fast enough. Let's see if I can catch it down around the middle. My reactions will have to be a little bit faster. Okay, here we go, reset. Okay, Emer pinches the top of the ruler. My hands are apart and level with the bottom of the ruler. Here we go. Hmm, my reactions are getting a little bit better, I think. Look at that. Now, I'm gonna adjust the game this time because I'd like to test myself even more. So, I'm going to reset the game. Emer pinches at the top of the ruler. Now, how will I adjust the game? What do you think? What could I do? I have an idea. I'm going to keep my hands even further out from the ruler at the start. 
Now my reactions are going to have to be super fast to catch this ruler. Here we go. Oh, look at that! Just from a little bit of practice, my reactions are really speeding up. Now let's think about how we use reactions in sport. Well, when I was your age, I used to play as a goalkeeper. And I used to really have to react really fast. Like if somebody was right in front of you and they headed the ball, you'd have to react really fast to save. And now that I'm a little bit older, <laughs> I like to play ping pong. And ping pong, table tennis, is a great game for using reactions. In the 50s, there were no computers or electronic games. Children had simple toys, like dolls, teddy bears, skipping ropes, and footballs. They played with marbles, like we saw, and yo-yos too. They played lots of games outside, like chasing, conkers, and hopscotch. Some people were lucky enough to have bicycles or go-karts that they made from old materials. The children back in the 50s also used to play games like football, and if there was no ball, they would use anything they could get their hands on. Old bottles, maybe some wood and string with plastic or paper, rolled up plastic bags, <laughs> anything at all. Now, I'm going to show you a few games that you can play with your friends and family that they used to play back in the 50s. One of them is very simple. One person throws an item, like this beanbag, over their shoulder. I do recommend using something soft for throwing. And everybody else behind has to outjump the other people to try and grab it. Whoever catches it is on, and it's their turn to throw it. Another game which is similar is Queenie I.O. One person has a beanbag or a ball. They throw it over their shoulder, and the people behind have to decide who holds on to the ball. They all put their hands behind their back, and they say, Queenie I.O., who has the ball? And then the Queenie, or whoever's on, has to decide which one of them has the beanbag or the ball behind their back. If they guess right, they're on again. If not, the person holding the ball or the beanbag is then on. Queenie I.O. might have been a bit more popular in the 1960s than the 50s, but it's still a very, very old game. Now, the next one I want to show you is my favourite, Hopscotch. Hopscotch is a little bit more complicated than it looks, but it's loads of fun. Now, I have my Hopscotch mat right here. Now, my beanbag is a little bit dirty. That's because I was outside playing Hopscotch all day. Do you want to know how to play? Here we go. So I'm going to start with my shooter. You can use a shooter as anything. It doesn't have to be a beanbag. It could be a bottle cap or a stone or anything at all. Generally, when you play hopscotch, it's not on a mat. It's outside and you can use chalk to draw out your hopscotch course. It doesn't have to go to 10 either like this one. You can do it to four, six, eight, any number. So here's how you play. The object of the game is you throw your shooter from one to 10. So straight away, I'm aiming to throw this into the square with the number one in it. If I throw it and it lands on the line, it doesn't count. And it's the next person's goal to try and throw their shooter into the number one. Here we go. Oh. Now, if I was playing with someone else, they take a turn. But since I'm not, I'm just going to go again. I landed on the line, that still wouldn't count. Here we go. Come on, Moontor John. Yes! So it landed in the number one. Now what I need to do is jump over the number one and put one foot in each square until I get to ten. And back. Here. We. Go. Now I need to turn around and come all the way back down again, trying to keep my feet off the lines. Now, when I get in front of my shooter again, I can pick it up and hop over that number. Now I'm aiming for the number two. Here we go. Yes! So now I jump on every single number except the number two. I'm pretty tired, so I'm not going to do it again. The object of the game is to work your way up the hopscotch course right up to the number ten and back again. It's a lot of fun and it's really, really good exercise. There are a lot of ways to play hopscotch, so the rules might sound a little bit different if you've ever played before, but that's okay, as long as you agree on the rules before you start playing. 
The next game I want to show you involves marbles. Now marbles itself is a great game, but it has a lot of rules. I'd be here all day trying to teach it to you. Marbles has so many variations and there are loads of games you can play with them. Children back in the 50s would draw a circle out of chalk and you used to have to try and bounce your marble into the circle. Let me show you. Now because we're inside, I'm not going to draw on the floor, but luckily I have my hula hoop. Here we go. So again, the idea is to take your marble and try to bounce it into the circle. Wish me luck. Yes! Got it! Mm-hmm. I have my basketball. Now I'm going to start off very slowly and then I'm going to speed it up. Ball around the world. Here we go. Oh. Don't stop this time. Keep it going. Ball around the world. Let's pick up the pace, shall we? I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Woo! Look at me now! Ball around the world! Simple on that one. Lovely. Okay, I think I have that. Good hand-eye coordination. I'm looking, I'm keeping an eye on the ball, and I'm using my hands as well. Now, how can I adjust this game? Hmm, I could use a different ball, I guess. How about if I pass it around my head? You ready? Here we go. Ball around the world. Okay. My hands and my eyes are all working together and I'm just about able to pass the ball around the world. How else could I do it? Let's drop down. Okay, we're going to go around our shins and calves. Here we go. Whoa, this seems a little more tricky. Hmm, I'm able to do all this. Why don't I try the other direction? So I was going clockwise. I'm now going to go anti-clockwise. Ooh, it's not as easy. All right, but I can still do it. Woo. All right. And I was able to stand up. Can I keep going? Oh, no, I can't because I got caught in my shirt. All right, well done, everybody. That's the first hand-eye coordination game of today's PE class. Next up, what have we got? Let's move over here to our desk. Now, have a look here. I have drawn a figure of eight onto this piece of paper. It goes in this direction. I've got little arrows as well pointing it out. All right, there it goes. I've also put down two counters to mark out my track. Now I've got a marble. And just like a footballer would, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dribble the marble around the figure of eight. And as close as I can, I'm going to try to keep it on the track. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Well, it takes a lot of hand-eye coordination. Okay, here we go. That's fine. Now, my course. Oh, oh! Went into the middle of the roundabout there. Keep it going. Okay, some good coordination going. Yep. Now, what you must remember is this is my right index finger. This is my writing hand. So, yeah, pretty good control over this. So how would I adjust this game? Okay, I'm going to want to my ruby ring from my right hand. Uh, oh, this is much more tricky. And I'm trying to walk it down. Here we go. Oh, I've gone completely off the page. Oh, how am I going to get back? Okay. Cheated a little bit there. Can't cheat when you're playing games. Got to stick to the rules. But this is a lot more tricky. Now let's try my non-handwriting hand. Here we go. Okay. Uh, here we go. Oh, this is much more difficult with my left hand. And that's something really important when we're working on hand-eye coordination. Very important to notice the difference in abilities between your writing hand and your non-writing hand. Oh, I have to really, really concentrate on this one and it gets lagged behind. So it's a really good test of hand-eye coordination. And this game is called Ball Slalom. Yep. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to park up here now, right in the middle. 
Well done. And let's try an activity. This is a coordination activity. There's that word again, coordination, working together. It's a drumming activity. So let's pop ourselves down onto the floor. Now, drumming. We're gonna use our two hands and the floor. So we have our right hand and our left hand. Now, I'd love to see you all down the floor, everybody playing drums along with me here. Now, right, left, right, left. Off you go. Right, left, right, left. Now, here's our drumming instruction. Follow me closely. Right, left, left. Right, left, left. Right, left, left. Right, left, left. I'm gonna put a word to it. Ba na na, ba na na, ba na na. All together, ba na na, ba na na, ba na na, ba na na. Now I'm going to add a new word, ba na na coffee. So coffee is just right left, okay? Ba na na coffee, ba na na coffee, ba na na coffee. Are you with me? Speed up. It's going to get more difficult. Okay. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Ba oh, I'm going to mix myself up here. Well done. It's one to practice. Remember, right, left, left, right, left. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Banana coffee. Banana. Oh, okay. And there you go. That's the challenge.